Welcome to Prepper Talk Radio here on KTalk AM 1640, your home of radio for the ready-minded. How do you like, like that, that intro? I like that. Is that good? Okay, that was good. So if you've been listening to us for a while, you know our, our moniker's kind of evolved into radio for the ready-minded. Our, our whole focus, our whole goal is simply to help you be better prepared, help you think long-term what could happen, how do I offset it, so that you're not living in fear, because if you're prepared... You shall not shall fear. Yeah, so, as always, I'm Scott, accompanied here with Shane. Good morning. The prepared guy. September How are you doing? F- I'm good. I'm really good, actually. Thank you. It is September. Holy September 1st. Smokes. Year is, yeah, is waning. The year is flying. Well, we're, we're excited. We've got, a, we've got a lot of things to talk about today. I want to remind you, we're brought to you by Survival Medical. They're one of our show sponsors, and these guys have been fantastic. First aid kits. For any scenario you come across, if you're backpacking, if you want to have a good first aid kit for the car, speaking of which... They fit into our topic perfectly today. They fit into our topic perfectly today, yep. but like earlier this week, I actually had to pull over and help oh, with yeah. an accident. There was a, a rollover accident, and that the rollover car actually struck another car, mm-hmm. sent him doing donuts, um, but two vehicles in, a, in an accident, both cars completely totaled, everybody walked away. Which I was mm-hmm. just shocked. I saw on the uh, highway billboards this, this morning, 24 people killed in August alone? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Well, it's, the huddle, it's part of the 100 deadliest days of summer. In, in, okay. Um, June, July, August, yeah. into September. Um, people just, I mean, it gets hot. People get out and have fun. They just don't pay attention as much as they should and during is the that, summer. Is that really the reason for the, for the, the wrecks is because of distractions? And I think, number one, it's, it's driving distracted. Mm-hmm. I, I think that above anything else yeah. is the cause for most accidents is people are just driving distracted. Mm. Um, but I, I, there were six cars, six different groups, groups of people stopped for this accident. I was the only one with a first aid kit. So I pull over my People, big you truck. have a car. There's a trunk there. There's yeah. plenty of room there. Just put stuff in it and leave it there. And you don't have to have anything stellar. You've got to have no. something that a starter kit at the very least. And so I carry with me um, the on-the-move kits mm-hmm. in my cars. The value in that is I get there, I pull my kit out, I've got tweezers, I've got shears, I've got, Emergency you know, blanket, I've yeah. got clotting factors. So if there's a major hemorrhaging going on, I've, I've got mm-hmm. tourniquets. Mm-hmm. Everything I, I think I could need until help comes, I've got. So the guy in the spin car that mm-hmm. got knocked off the freeway, he was fine. Um, the other guy, that well, the other lady... Who was in the rollover? Mm-hmm. Her car, like she was, it was glass everywhere. Oh, so yeah, yeah. she, someone beat me to that car, and he's helping her get out. And I'm like, "Have you checked her yet? Don't, Don't move her." her. Yet, and yeah. he's like, "Oh no, how, uh, how are you feeling?" And I'm like, "Stop, stop, stop." So I go head to toe. That's a good question, but I'm like, "That's fantastic. You're feeling horrible. You were just in a rollover accident." And so I, I ask her, "I'm like, how's your head feel? Do you have any? Are you bleeding mm-hmm. anywhere? Mm-hmm. Okay, how does your neck feel? Is it mm-hmm. sore? Is it tender?" And she's like, well, it's really sore. And I'm like, you, should probably you shouldn't sit be moving. And, yeah. I'm like, let's have you sit down. There's she's no like, reason to leave the car. I don't want to sit in the wheels, car. It's on its wheels, right? Yeah. It's, it's not on fire. It's, no, it's not, not in traffic. Fiber. There's, there's nothing no reason going to get him out of the car. Yes. She's clear off the road. Like, mm-hmm. she's there's yeah. there's at least 20 feet away from any road at that point. Cause she's in the in the dirt median between mm-hmm. I-15 and 215. Um, and the other people are trying to walk her away from the car. I'm like, no, she's fine right here. Let's put her back. Let's have her sit down. I'm like, you don't want to move her anyways because she just rolled over. Let the paramedics who know what they're yeah. doing, who have the right, you know, neck braces and you know, seat collars, to to stabilize her and before, so she can get checked. Yeah. And as soon as I'm like, guys, we need to stabilize her. We need to leave her in one position. People are like, oh, you got this. I'm gone. And I'm like, you saw the accident. <laughs> Stay for the police report. I didn't even see the accident. Yeah, I was yeah. too far, too many cars back. And they they were gone. They and them. they just took off. Yes. And ex- except for one guy, this guy Dennis, mm-hmm. he's like, I'm staying here. And he goes and gets his truck and brings it over by her car, and he's got the AC on. He's like, "Let's have you sit in this car since you're not just sit- so you're not sitting mm-hmm. on the ground." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Dude, good thinking." So we sit her in the car. I'm going through things with her, and she just breaks down. And I'm like, "She starts crying." She starts crying. Wow. I didn't have time to put on my gloves yet. Yeah. I, I like to put gloves on because I started pulling the glass out of her arms, mm-hmm. and she had glass in her face, her yeah, arms, yeah. and so I've got my tweezers out of my 
first aid kit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're hospital sh- hospital tweezers. And so super easy to use, but I'm pulling little shards of glass from everywhere, trying not to, to make hit her any, more comfortable. Just to make yeah. her more comfortable yeah. and, and ease the stress. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if she see she feels that oh someone's actually trying to help me, I'm gonna she's gonna be more she calm. Calm down. She, yeah, her heart rate's going to go down. And, and then she thought able. of her son who needs to give her a ride. And I'm like, you're not getting a ride from here unless it's from the ambulance. The I'm ambulance, like, yeah. you, you're in a major accident and you're in shock. Out. And the emergency services, I got to tip my hat. Highway Patrol was like on it. They were on it so fast. They were detouring traffic. Um, the, the fire department, Bountiful Fire and Rescue is there right away checking for vitals. They ended up carting her off. Um, and she needed to go to the hospital because they're worried about her vertebrae. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is why you don't move anybody. Yeah. You know, let let the professionals do it. Now, so really the best way to get prepared, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. is to have that knowledge of what to do and what not to do in that kind of situation. Yeah, it's Basic good to have first the first aid, aid kit. Yep. And, you know, if she had some, you know, if she had some cuts and such, you could begin to address those if they're, if they're bad enough. But. Now, if you go to Shield Safety, um, they've got some really good first oh, yeah. level first Videos. aid classes. Um, all, all videos, all online, mm-hmm. really easy to do, free. You can also check out our buddies TNT First Aid. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got an app. Yeah, that app, yeah. The, uh, the medic, their, uh, emergency medic. I don't know, I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head. But their, their app has short videos on how to do these things. And the whole thing downloads is just a couple bucks. Super easy to use. I'm actually writing a blog about it because it's, it's just, it's, it's virtual medic. That's it's what it's virtual called. And it's stored to your phone, so you don't need an internet connection. You don't have to be half service. And it takes at. a very little space. So it's pretty pretty dang awesome. But that's kind of where we're leading into today is kind of like what do I need to be most prepared for? I mean, the next thing is let's kind of take a look back at what's yep. going on in Houston. All right? I've had a lot of people, what do I need in my bag? What do I need at home? What do I need? We're going to talk about that, but let's talk a little bit about Houston because I think, Shane, you and I, as before the show started, we were talking about some of the different things yep. that could be. There's some different aspects that really aren't being discussed very much. Uh, beyond you know the tragedy that's happening, and and you know we all uh, sympathize and empathize with what's what's go- what's going on down there. Uh, I think what we need to consider is the effect. What effect this is going to have? You know, as preppers, we try and stay uh, enlightened, knowledgeable about what's happening in the aware, aware. That's a, yeah, a much better word uh, of what's going on in the financial realm right in precious metals and you know banking yada yada and government everything we try and keep our fingers on a lot of different things so and and one word that always pops up is okay what's going to be the next black swan right a black swan is something that's completely unexpected i mean completely unexpected you know we can see that the financial system is in tatters it's on it's it's hanging by a thread whatever you know oh, it's, yeah it's well when very interest fragile. rates on homes go down yeah oh that's a that's a good indicator that there's something going on that you need to be careful for, mm-hmm. right? They've they've dropped from four point one to four and four point two five down like to three point seven five again. And I'm like, again, unsustainable. Yeah, yeah. and then that's a strange, that's an anomaly where you see it go down. I mean, it went down w- along with the decrease in interest rates from the Fed, right? Mm-hmm. But then for the Fed to raise rates, and then you see interest rates go up on mortgages up above four. And then nothing else happens, but they come back down. So there's nothing in the market to indicate, okay, why should we lo- uh, lower interest rate? Why are interest rates on home loans lower? Uh, but they go down anyway. Mm-hmm. And so that tells me, yeah, uh, they're trying to drum up more business. They're trying to get more loans, right? So that's, yeah, that's a indi- big indicator that jumped out yeah, to me. Yeah. So anyway, I was talking Black Swan, and I don't think – I've heard a few places where – this, this hurricane, Harvey, may be the next black swan. So to think about the economic impact beyond the, the, the other impacts that you see all over the news and so forth, um, all of the cars that have been flooded that are going to be totaled. You know, those oh, are gonna, yeah. Those are going to be flooded. Those are going to come onto the market, and people are going to try and pass it by for a, a, a perfectly fine car. There's one impact. Plus, all these people are going to stop payment, making their payments. And we all hear about the auto loan bubble. You know, it's the subprime and sub-subprime lending to people who really can't afford these cars. So what impact is all of these people not making their payments going to have on the auto loan bubble, on the, these financial institutions? And same thing with all the homes that were flooded. People, just like in New Orleans, right, except for on a magnitude much greater, two, three, four times. I mean, who, I don't really know how right. much greater this impact is, but homes that you know people will end up walking away from. Oh, absolutely. It, anyone without insurance is, is now homeless. One, to t- right? or, one or two out of ten people do not have flood insurance in these areas. And so, yes, there'll be, there'll be loans from FEMA or whomever from the government 
to rebuild, but they can't. People can't afford their own payments right now, and their homes, besides, you know, getting a loan from FEMA, to have to repay that as well. Yeah, so there's going to be a big impact uh, to the banking system, uh, and. And this could also be used as an excuse to be blamed on a financial collapse on this. Well, another unique thing about this is, okay, from a preparedness mindset and from a specifically a Christian preparedness mm-hmm. mindset, right? We're, we're, we're both Mormon, LDS. And uh, so we, we focus on the – not the end time zombie side of things that people – you see TV promote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As, that's the fun entertainment side mm-hmm. of things. But we focus on the – Christ is coming back again. Yeah, exactly. Side of things, and which and is still an exciting event. It's it's the great and, and terrible yep. day of the Lord. So the terrible part, and, and all the promises are that the oceans will heave beyond their bounds. Mm-hmm. Well, what's this an example of? Yep. The ocean heaving beyond its bounds. Mm-hmm. Earthquakes. Yep. Um, plagues. Mm-hmm. That's not going to be fun. No. Um, no that's yeah. I'd, I'd rather. Yeah, I'd rather fall out of a plane at 3,000 feet and just <laughs> pop, right? You know, I don't know. <laughs> and we, we've had a show about pandemics, and we should yeah. probably address that again. We're going to do it again. Future, yeah. But th- there's all these things that are that are challenges that are going to be coming, right? Well, if you're waking up and if you're watching these things, you'll see, you know, all the, the mm-hmm. we call them Getty and Robbers, but it's secret combinations, you mm-hmm. know, people that are working evil plans to, to get gain and power. Mm-hmm. You know, watching the financial markets, that's Absolutely. It, exactly it, what that it's is. It's right in there. Um, and, and yeah, I think what you're what you're trying to say is that what we're seeing, there's signs. Yeah. And, and my my intent this morning was to raise a warning voice again. You know. Yep. Okay. And, and another thing, September, September 23rd has kind of been a big date for years and years and years for for some type of event. Now I'm not one who subscribes to that type. Okay, this is going to happen on a certain date. No, no way. It's 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 stupid. It's uh, don't fall into those traps. But there is something behind it. There's something to it. Whether it's there's some validity day, because some of vali- its consistency. Some, yeah, consistency or some type of event that that might happen. So I just think you know we're to, to say we're moving into dangerous times. That's kind of I don't know that I agree with that because we're we're still living in the same kind of time. It's not changing dramatically. Well, if you look at our time versus twenty years ago, oh, yeah. thirty years ago, yeah. the frequency of events is getting more increased. Yeah, not something to all of a sudden freak out about. It it's yeah. no different than it was yesterday or the day before. Mm-hmm. We've got we've just got more things happening. I mean, there's they're worried about the r- the record rainfall that's mm-hmm. already happened in Houston. That's going to continue to happen. Now going to happen in Louisiana. You know, New Orleans is in yeah, trouble yeah. again. Um, but it's record rainfall. But there's also tornadoes and there's also another hurricane gearing up. And yeah. and that's just and what, that this, is, shift, this yeah. is just the time of the year. And, and like like you're saying, Scott, is things are are ramping up they're more frequent mm-hmm. and i believe you know kind of like this same christian belief we're talking about is that things are going to get worse and they're not yep. going to get better until they get extremely worse but they yep. eventually will get better but uh, so i guess what i'm trying to say before this break is just get prepared don't delay any longer get your food storage get your basics and work on it right now there's no more time to delay because something like you know Hurricane Harvey could happen up here. It, you know, maybe it's an earthquake. Maybe it's. I mean, maybe it's a, a an extreme downpour. Yep. That floods your home. Um, well, so there's a lot back, of different possibilities. Yeah, it all comes. It kind of comes back to mindset and gear set, mm-hmm. right? Are you filling your mind with things that are going to help you be better prepared? Mm-hmm. Um, are you becoming anti fragile, meaning resilient, mm-hmm. meaning I can handle whatever's coming my way? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the most important things is that ability to overcome and adapt. Gear, technology, you know, your go bag or your mm-hmm. bug out bag or your 72-hour kit, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. As long as you're you're building something that's going to help you, do that. Layers. Yep. Layers. And we're going to talk about those layers when we get back. We're going to kind of give you a little bit of a list, um, but we want to talk about the essentials. Gear well, in particular. We're gearheads. We love gear. We have our recommendations. We're going to give you those after the break. Absolutely. And remember, this is brought to you by Survival Medical, the only first aid kit tougher than nature. Welcome back to Prepper Talk Radio here on AM 1640 K Talk. We're also streaming at ktalkmedia.com, Renegade Rambler Radio. That's true. And Spreaker and iHeart. Yes, so we'll have our podcasts up there. We've been uploading some of our older shows, this podcast, and the current shows as well. So, yeah, go to, you can go to iHeart, your iHeart Radio app, type in Prepper. We'll pop right we'll up. We'll pop right up. And you can so listen to you'll our see our cool here. logo. It's a yeah. It's an orange crosshairs or Good job on that, Scott. With a radio mic. And we do have and morale badges available with those. Yes, we do. Check out PrepperTalkRadio.com. That's right. 
So our show is brought to you today by Survival Medical, survival-medical.com. First Aid Evolved, the the only waterproof, windproof, dirtproof, and uh, long hurricane term, proof. Yeah, hurricane proof. Long term kit. This thing will last you up to twenty years. And once you open it up, it'll reseal. So it's fantastic, but it's not this big bulky thing. They're they're pretty compact, and there's a ton of stuff in there. Yeah, especially when you get it new, you put it in your. It, it takes up very little space. Stick in your bag, and there's a lot of stuff in there. That's why I have three first aid kits in my truck. Yep. just they don't take up much space. And we were going to get things. into the details for each one of our layers for which kits, first aid kits to have in, the, in those layers. Yeah. So let, do you want to start with the EDC layer? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, perfect. First layer. We call it EDC. Everyday carry. Kind of the things that go in your pockets, a thing that fit on your belt. Stuff you have with you all the time. All the time. And then there's the EDC layer that's kind of like maybe I have a bag that I carry with yep. me. So there's some some more items, like a computer bag. There's more items that yep. you can carry in there. Or your car is an extension. So we're going to work our way out. We're going to start on the core. Now we're going to have time for this. We we need like a four hour show. We're gonna we're we're probably going to need to do a uh, Facebook Live event um, talking about That's this later That's this good, week, yeah. maybe maybe next week. Um, but as well as we're going to start putting more materials available on the website, so you can download the list of things that mm-hmm. we recommend, and mm-hmm. we'll also do more product reviews and gear review. But let's talk first layer. Okay, what you can carry on you, right? Obviously shoes. Yes. Open-toed shoes, not so good. Flip-flops, not so good. Mm-hmm. I I usually have close but it's summer, good Scott. shoes, sneakers, and stuff, but I'm trying to yeah. train my feet, and so I've been wearing flip-flops a lot mm-hmm. or going barefoot a lot. Well, when I pulled over to the accident last week, mm-hmm. or actually this week, I was wearing flip-flops. I'm like, mm-hmm. son of a bee. Yeah, you weren't ready. This is this is those times I had everything ready but sho- good, proper footwear. Yeah. Um, so I think take a minute. Get some good quality shoes that you can wear anytime, mm-hmm. all year long. What, what do you? What brand do you like? What do you wear? I, I rotate, so I've mm-hmm. got my kind of everyday walking sneakers. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't buy running shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, the ergonomically, they're just they mess your legs up. Mm-hmm. Um, I love hiking shoes. I love Keen. Okay, yeah, Keen for me is a great. It's a brand. wider shoe. It's it fits a wider toe box. Yeah. I have, I have wider toe box. Here big, we go. I have big wide toe box feet, and so finding shoes like. Solomon, mm-hmm. I can't wear. That's what I wear. But yeah, you. That's my go to shoe. I mean, I can't wear it for work every day because I have to wear a nicer shoe. So I like Red Wing. I love the Red, Red Wing Wing's shoes. Great. I have them both steel toe and regular for my work. You know, they look good and I can walk 100 miles in these things. They're super comfortable. They're expensive, but they will, they're leather and they will last and they last and last and last. So I'm on my second pair of Keen in five years. Mm hmm. That's how long these shoes yeah. last. For. Oh yeah, they last. You're swapping out inserts as you need, but they're great, great. You know, find a pair of shoes that really works for you, um, and utilize it. Wear them as much as possible. And don't yeah, don't be afraid to spend some money on those things. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't want to mean to brag or anything, but I spend like 150 bucks a pair on my shoe, my shoes. But I wear those until they literally fall apart. Yeah, and it's two, three, four, like five years or so. Yeah, I wear, strength, wear durability, things. and function yeah. are the keys. Super, super important to be properly prepared. Like you said, this car crash, you pulled out and and you had flip flops, and you got to go off into the weeds, right, mm-hmm. and into the glass and so into was, the debris. I was so. pulling, you know, uh, barbs out of my flip flops. Thankfully, not out of my toes. Yeah, you know, but it could have been worse. Mm-hmm. You know. But always, you know, always have proper shoes. Now, I had other pair of shoes in the, in car, the car, but... But what kind of time do you have? Oh, wait a second. I'm going to put my other shoes out. On. I got to get over there. Exactly. So it's always good. So I'm, I'm back to wearing shoes, and I, I will continue to be wearing shoes. But I need to do that same thing you're doing, is strengthen my feet by taking my shoes off and, you know, wearing going around barefoot or stocking foot, whatever. Yeah. Because uh, I'm too used to wearing shoes. My feet are too used to wearing strengthen shoes. Strengthen the shoes, or strengthen, strengthen the feet, feet, so it doesn't matter what shoes you're wearing, but the shoes are to really extent, there for protection. Yeah. Like, for example, in this major catastrophe in Houston, Mm -hmm. you know, what kind of shoes do you need to wear? Well, really anything with a tough sole, Mm -hmm. because you're walking in water, it's going to get soaked. It doesn't matter if your shoe's waterproof or not, because as as soon as you're shin deep, it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what kind of shoe it is, because it's going to get... And that's where wet in the inside. That's where a synthetic fabric would probably come in better than leather. Leather will eventually uh, stretch mm-hmm. and those type. But you know, still leather is still going to be just fine. But uh, yeah, I'd go with a, a synthetic shoe, like you know, like my Solomon's. They're synthetic mm-hmm. and I'm, they're Gore-Tex, and but not going to do any good in that in, in in that kind of water. But it'll get you out. That's exactly. the key. It's you need something that's going to get you to a safe space. It gets you to the next level, you know, next yeah. protection place, and that's why you to help the your gear f- is so important. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what, you know, and allow you to help your family as well. Because you know, my kids, my wife, they wear socks around, you know, wear, wear bare feet around the house most of the time. They've got flip flops on, so someone's got to be there to 
handle the dirty stuff, right? You know, yep. you got to be prepared in that very moment. Okay, so cool. Footwear, very Footwear. important. Okay. Here's something I always have on me, uh, my watch. This is uh, a Casio Mudmaster. It has a compass. It has, uh, you know, all the stopwatch, all that kind of stuff, too. But it's an extremely durable watch. It's impact resistant. It's shock resistant. It's, you know, it's, it's something that's not going to let me down. Time is, is, is important, especially, mm-hmm. you know, medical situations, those types of things. But uh, in particular, it, it gives me points of reference, especially in an emergency. And it's, a better, it's better than having your phone because a lot of us rely yes. on our phones for mm-hmm. time. Now, that's fine. In a car crash, where's that lady's phone? Your, well, it was in her hands. Oh, she. I that's part of the problem. No. <laughs> there that's, we go. That's, that's why the accident happened. Uh, she was she playing on her phone and she and never let go of the two thing. lanes. And so she lost her glasses and she's freaking out about her glasses, but she had her phone that. clenched in her fist. Jeez. Um, but going back on phones, yeah, mm-hmm. you can get your clock, you can get a compass, you can get all these resources on it, but the batteries drain really quickly. Whereas a watch, oh, yeah. they go on and year, on. At and least on a year on this on battery. And on and on. And you can get the solar models as well, which mm-hmm. you know last 10 plus years. So. I, I think a watch is important. Uh, it always has been, been for me. It's always been you know, a point of reference. Mm-hmm. It's all you know. I've got the compass on there. I've got other features as well. Uh, you know, in, in, well, uh, clinometer. You know, it tells you your your rate, rise of descent, and so forth. Those types of things. I like Sunto as well. Casio has done the best for me my entire life. I still have Casio watches from when I was a teenager. My first altimeter barometer yeah, watch. Yeah, Casio is fantastic. I also like outside of Casio. I like five eleven. Okay. Yeah, their watch. Um, that's the one I I've got mm-hmm. is I've got one of their watches. It's got uh, what was the word for altitude? Oh, the, in- Clim- the in- inclinometer. Inclinometer. It's got one of those. Oh, that, that's it. Okay. Also has the alti- altimeter. Altimeter. Means, it also yeah. has a wind detector. Yep. So this mine's a shooter's shooter's watch. So mm-hmm. this will tell you what direction the wind's coming from oh, okay. by holding cool. your arm up oh, and wow, hitting a certain cool. button. And so that'll tell you mm-hmm. how to adjust your shot. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, holy crap! It's really smarter simple. than I am. Yeah, when it comes to long range, really shooting. simple, cool, useful tools that you can have always on your on your wrist. Yep. that you're not going to lose it. It's you know, it's always available to you. But there's things like Wazoo has the mm-hmm. survival bracelet. That's true. And they've got a watch version. Yep. That's fantastic because it's got fire starters. It's got an emergency. There's whistle, some cordage it's got in there. Cordage. Yep. It's, I mean, there's so many different. It's even got a fishing kit in the watch. Mm-hmm. So there's different things you can do. Um, Tim Ralston even created a watch that's that. It's, that's it's true. a little bigger and bulkier, yep. but. Don't worry so much about the bigger and bulky. Worry about, Having do I something. have resources yeah. that I can use in multiple different situations? You know, and we've talked to, uh, and I forget, uh, alone, um, Alan K. Yeah, Alan he K. always has uh, some emergency kit in his pocket, his fire starter, his water pouch, water filter, in his pocket, not just on, in a bag. He mm-hmm. has it on him, you know, and this is, you know, he teaches for full time, you know, that's what he does now. So it's not always easy for me to have a water filter in my pocket, right? So but, his, he's got two water bags in his pocket mm-hmm, at all times. Mm-hmm. They're they're folded up and they yep. take up little space. But he also has a, l- a large tablets. garbage bag in his pocket at all times. Mm-hmm. He's he's got all these cool little gadgets that he's been able to fit into the small container. But mm-hmm. and it's it's evolved over the years. And I think that's what each person needs to do is mm-hmm. kind of find what works for them, and and that'll let, evolve. Let it evolve and change. Yeah, I've, I've switched out knives and watches and guns and uh, over the years saying, okay, this works, but not quite exactly what. I need, and so mm-hmm. we'll, yeah, I'll change it. But you have to start somewhere. Yeah, and I think that that leads right into the next thing is okay, knives, mm-hmm. knives, and multi tools. Yeah, multi tools, absolutely. I, I think those are absolutely necessary. Um, any good knife with a glass breaker tip on the back mm-hmm. is huge. Yeah, because absolutely. that'll get you out of a, out of a, out of your car if you're trapped in yeah, your if car. You need to. Yeah, um, it'll also help you rescue other people who might be trapped in a car. Um, but how many times do you need that knife to cut something? Mm-hmm. I use my knife almost daily. Oh, yeah, absolutely. To cut something, all the time. Um, and yeah, it may seem trivial, but then you stand in there. Okay, uh, I need to cut this. Where's a knife or where's scissors? You know, and it, it saves you time. It oh, saves yeah. you effort, and you make you just makes you feel more prepared. Kind of like I've said before on another show. Get a pocket knife. You know, just a two or three inch pocket knife that you can fit in your pocket that hangs on the edge of your pocket, uh, and you'll see how it changes your life. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of stupid a pocket it's, knife, and, but, and you know. Plan on spending between twenty five and forty bucks. I, I'm going to disagree a little bit. I would say spend on, plan on spending forty to eighty bucks. Well, 
it, not everybody needs as mm-hmm. robust a knife. Well, right? uh, yes, and, and I don't carry a really robust knife. Okay, it's it's, it's a lightweight knife. That's important for me because, and I think for a lot of people who don't even like to have their keys in their pocket, right? Mm-hmm. Let's let me throw a, a knife on my pocket. Now, is that too. a Spyderco? This is a Spyderco. Yeah, I've said, talked about Great this brand. one before. It's called the Manix Two. Super lightweight. There are lighter ones, but this is still very light. It's a high quality steel, and uh, and it's just a cool knife. You know, I, I like the collectability of knives too. I mean, yeah. I'm a knife guy. Uh, so, I like Spyderco. I used to carry Spyderco. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've switched. I now carry Kershaw. Mm-hmm. Kershaw, Kershaw is, is a great is, brand. Is, it's a lower cost brand mm-hmm. of knife to get into, but it also has tools that are more geared to what I do. Okay, it's more. It has some more multifunction features. Some of the knives, yeah. Some of the knives, like, like the one you one you like. To my carry. my, I, I go back and forth depending on what I'm doing. If I'm just kind of random, mm-hmm. you know, normal day, I carry a very ergonomically comfortable knife to use with a quick assist back. Mm-hmm. So it opens very quickly. Right. It's much easier. And, and like the Spyderco has a big, big eyelet hole that I can easily open with one hand. This knife can function with one hand. I can open yeah. it and close it. And that's that's the other thing is make sure you've got a knives that are one hand function mm-hmm. functional, right? You don't have to do something crazy to yep. get things up. Like this is great. Swiss Army knives are awesome. Mm-hmm. But it's not your primary. Mm-hmm. That's your backup. Yeah, I carried the the, the Swiss Champ for probably a dec- at least a decade. Yeah, I used it all the time. But yeah, you have to use both hands to, to utilize it. Anything that you're having to take time to find it and then open it is a challenge. Anything that you can, can just be, pop yeah. open quickly. But I would still rather have a you know Swiss Army knife in my pocket than nothing. Than nothing. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. The other thing is is like I I love um, Gerber mm-hmm. um, Leatherman's awesome too the, for the your tools. for your multi tools. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of different types of things you can there's do with knives. I mean, if you want to go into knives, you can go crazy yeah. with knives. Oh, yeah. Like, there's bushcraft knives. I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's anything and everything. You can go crazy and get a kukri. I mean, you can get bigger blades. You can get mm-hmm. a big chopper. You can I carry mean, a fixed blade on you. Yeah, you know, if you have the ability and it, you know, it doesn't hamper your work or whatever. And there's ones that slide right inside. You can put a little belt. Mm-hmm. Loop uh, there back. are n- neck knives that can you hang a necklace around your your your, your, your neck and and just have a small you know, one, inch one inch blade or something like that. And a lot of times it's all you really need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So find what works for you. Um, we'll put some examples up uh, over the next few days on our social media so you can get a better idea. But mm-hmm. get a knife, get and then get a multi tool. And I think if you want to start in the twenty to forty dollar range, I think Kershaw is the perfect place to start. Yeah, uh, they have, and I like Blade HQ. They're Blade not responsible, but we awesome. love Blade HQ. They're a local company. They're the biggest online, uh, and their Kershaw knives are, are really well priced. So, well, th- and that, here's the thing: is mm-hmm. Blade HQ not for any other reason than this? You can get a Kershaw knife that's forty bucks for twenty five mm-hmm. on Blade mm-hmm. HQ. Mm-hmm. That's why I say you can spend between twenty five and fifty yeah, bucks right. on a starter for a knife. Yeah. Now that knife will be heavier and maybe a little more bulky, but that's also why it has a lower cost. So. Uh, then say this spider coat that I'm carrying. Oh yeah, your spider coat right. is an, ult- an really ultra light type yeah, knife. Yeah. This is a very light knife. Yeah, it's not. But too it's bad. it's for me it's very fast, very functional, easy to use. And the nice thing I like about Kershaw is if anything falls apart on the knife ever, they'll replace they it for free. It. So it's it's lifetime parts. Mm-hmm. I love that. If the blade yeah. breaks, they replace it. And and Buck is a good really good brand too. Yep, I've got a Buck's Buck as really well, but they're yeah. they're bigger and heavier. Mm-hmm. But yep. they're they're, they're, not they're as sturdy, like hand down, yep. like the old timers. My mm-hmm. grandpa has one, and I'm like, if if, if and when he ever passes away, mm-hmm. I would love to get, get his, his little old timer. Knives. I love yeah. I love those knives. Yeah, um, they'll last forever. I've got one I got from my Eagle Award when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. That's the only knife I still have from that time in my life. There are very few things I collect, but knives is one of them. There you go. And uh, you know, I do love the Swiss Army. When I talk Swiss Army, I'm talking Victorinox, yeah. not the the Winger that's brand. That's the that's the, the upper end, uh, the the higher priced, but it's mm-hmm. also stronger. It's going to last higher longer. Higher quality, yeah. I mean, you can just in in the fit and finish and feel of it compared to other. Well, it's tools. stronger steel. Yep. Better quality steel. Everything quality steel everything's going to last longer on that. Knife. And yeah, and just it, and it's something you know I've I've I purchased for my kids Swiss Army knives. I'm, I want to pass mine down to them and. And yeah, absolutely. I love I love Swiss Army knives, even just to collect them in in all their variations. Absolutely. Yeah, and I love the multi tools. I think those are the best multi tools. Yeah, and anything with anything you can find that works for you that's easy to use. Um, for sure, you want pliers. For yeah, sure, you absolutely. want a secondary blade, a saw, a saw, and mm-hmm. a file. Mm-hmm. People oh, yeah, are like, absolutely file. Why do I need a file? I'm like, it's not a nail file. It can it's, be used as a nail. It file, can be used as yeah. a nail file, and I've used it as but a steel file. Yeah, and you can cut through a lot more. More materials than just steel. I mean, plastics and so forth. So, yeah, that file comes in very handy. I oh, love yeah. the file, love the saw. You have a good blade on there. Uh, I like the Phillips screwdriver. 
you know, that's I think that's an important to have on Phillips on a and Swiss Flathead and mm-hmm. can opener. Can op- oh yeah, absolutely the can opener. It, that that's an essential one. And bottle opener. I mean, you got to be able to access your Fanta when Kraft yeah, the fan. Even even <laughs> there you go. But hey, even even some of the smallest of the of the Swiss Army knives, Victorinox have that can opener on there. Mm-hmm. So that if you're in an emergency, you got it in your pocket. You got a can opener right there in your pocket. It's you just, find a can of beans on the side of the road, and it's not bulging, you and you're starving. Go to town, my friend. Exactly, and they work extremely. It works extremely well. Next time you you want to go open a can, grab your grab your Swiss Army knife and practice with it. Yeah, it's, it's you awesome. can get to the point where it's actually faster than the electric openers. Yeah, like you can go quick. Yeah, they're pretty. Good. Um, so learn how to use it, and that, and that goes back to our first thing we talked about was mindset, and we can get into that more later mm-hmm. in another show. But that's a mind skill. Yeah, Practice yeah, and hone that skill so that it stays sharp. No, I'm going to just go grab the electric can opener. I'm, that's my go-to. Yeah. Right? So many people. Yeah. No, I, How I, are you going to open your can when – I was at my mother-in-law's, case in point. She had an electric, but she didn't have a hand-cranked mm-hmm. version of anything to open up cans. I'm mm-hmm. like, seriously? She's All a preparedness electric. coordinator. And I'm but, like, but no, seriously? <laughs> but no manual hand can opener. So it's, it's funny. She now has one. I gave her a hard enough time that she went and bought one. I think she has bought two, but – Let's yeah. go back to EDC. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I think we're, we running yeah, out we're almost out of time. We're, here. we're hitting a break here in a second. Um, yeah, oh, there it is. There is. There's the music. Well, we're, we've got more stuff. We're going to well, continue so on EDC stuff, and so then kind of start expanding. But reminder, we are brought to you by Survival Medical. Survival Dash Medical first aid kits tougher than nature. These things are fantastic. That's what we use, and that's what I responded with this week when I came across an accident. So stay tuned. Stay awake. We'll be right back after this break. Let's cut that music off. Yeah, we're 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 running out of time, literally and figuratively. We, we've only got a few minutes left. No, I'm just kidding. Literally, we've got we've got almost 15 minutes left in our our it's show not today. It's not enough. Thank you for listening to Prepper Talk Radio here on AM 1640 K Talk, as well as streamed live K Talk Media and all of our fun apps, our digital streams, and of course on Spreaker and iHeart. Then if you follow us on Facebook because we love to chat with you guys there. Absolutely. So we're talking. Gear. Gear. Yeah, gear is kind of really the, the ready, topic today. The readiness of gear. So the last thing we really want to talk about on kind of your your everyday carry is really kind of your, your flashlight and then a, your sidearm. Right, because they kind of go hand in hand. And your flashlight, you want something that's high lumen, mm-hmm. small, easy to use, can clip in a pocket or clip on your belt. Yep. You don't want a big, bulky, like, I love, here's a product I love, but it's not an EDC item. Your big flashlight from... The Maglite? Maglite, they're great, but I was going to say <laughs> hybrid light. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because it's constantly charging. It's it's It charges off the sun or any other light. Right, right. It's great, but it's not, not a good EDC, EDC light, light right. at all. It's a great shelter-in-place light. It's great, great maybe uh, your bug-out kit. And you can't, like headlamps, those don't work either because it's not easy to just slide in right. a pocket, low profile. A really good, like I like J5 Tactical for a mm-hmm. very affordable version. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. But that's... That's your. It's not as compact. It's not as mm-hmm. small. It's, it's not true. As it is a little bit larger. It's not as high lumen either. They have some pretty high lumen, but yeah, it's not quite as small, and uh, it doesn't quite have as many functions as some of these other right. other lights have, which are not always necessary. Right. You don't always need the additional. It's got functions. a highlight. It's got a medium light, and it's got a flashlight. Yeah, light. you've got you've got a high, low, and maybe a medium and, and a strobe. So maybe three yeah. to four functions. And and I think uh, the the important parts you need to have in a flashlight is, of course, the ultra bright, two hundred mm-hmm. lumen or brighter. Mm-hmm. And that's for defense in combination with your handgun. But uh, uh, a medium setting, you know, somewhere around 100 lumens, uh, maybe something around 50 lumens, and then an ultra low. I'd like like a half a lumen, something yep. really low. Or even if you've got a red light. Or a red light. Yeah, even red light. I, but I do like the really low uh, lumens, you know, just something you'd use as a, as a, a, a night light you know, for my kids. You know, if they're, they're asleep and power's out, put this light over here, and, and it'll last 100 plus hours. Or as to kind of preserve your night vision. You know, in doing some things, you need very, very little light to accomplish the task. You don't need 200 lumens in a small room. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. you're wasting your battery. Um, so the brand I prefer, I mean, I've gone through a lot of different flashlights. Yeah. I like the Phoenix brand. It's called F-E-N-I-X. Get them on Blade HQ. Get them on, you know, anywhere. But Phoenix is a brand that I prefer. And I've dropped them. They've, they, you have, can get rechargeable versions. You get double A, triple A versions. The rechargeable CR-123. version just sets on, you set it down. I on. have that in the Olight brand. That's right, Olight. And I do like that, although I've, for me, it's not working so great as an EDC light. Okay. 
uh, I'll be using it on a job site, whatever, and then it'll go out. It'll, it'll, I'll just lose my light because the battery loses a certain charge. It won't power that lumen anymore. But with like a CR123 lithium battery, uh, it will still continue to put out light on the lower setting. So now I think the, the important thing to note here is is you don't know how good your light is until, unless you're testing it mm-hmm. and using it frequently. And that way you can find out if that's the right light for you, mm-hmm. which Shane... I does through, more than I, I do with with lights. I literally have dozens of flashlights that I've gone. Nah, I like this is, but I'm going to use it for this purpose, or I'm going to set yep. it aside for this purpose. Like the flashlight I have at my nightstand is a single AAA. Uh, it's got uh, you know three light settings: a low, medium, and high. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's what I use when I get up at night to so I don't wake anybody else up, and I use that to find my way around. It's plenty of lumens for the house, and it's really small. I do that with my cell phone. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, because I mean, I'll usually keep my light keep clipped to my there. pants. And then mm-hmm. the next morning, I'll pull it off yeah. that pants and put it on the new well, pants. I do. But I then my cell these... phone I've got on me, so I'll yeah. either use the screen as a light mm-hmm. or I'll use the backlight yeah. as a light. Um, yeah, and I think most people probably do that, too. And so, yeah, what's the need for an EDC light? So so the one I carry on me is called the PD-25. It's a Phoenix, uh, but it's more of a combination tactical and EDC light. So it has a, a bezel where I can strike people with, mm-hmm. but it also has a momentary switch. So all I have to do is push it slightly, and it comes on. Yeah, I don't have to click it. It's it's very, and that's kind of a, a tactical. It's nice covert advantage. because no one hears the light clicking on. And also, I can I can use it momentarily. I can turn it on off on off on off. So people, so someone can't see where I'm at. I'm, I'm not right. shining it all the time. I'm only using it as necessary, and that's very tactical use. So I love that light, and I've got plenty of others. You know, the hybrid lights they're fantastic. Yeah, and I know I'm rambling and rambling. We're running out of time here, but. Uh, those particular those lights in particular, I think for around the house, we wanted to get into eventually, you know, the shelter in place topic. I think mm-hmm. hybrid light are fantastic around the house. I think maybe we need to take this conversation through to next week as well. Okay. Stay tuned next week because we're going to go to the next layer. Okay. Next week. Okay. Because there's we obviously we're we're yeah. less than ten minutes away from the end of the show, and we're still working on our EDC, on our EDC. list. Yeah, because we took the whole first segment too. For we had too much fun. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of the show. Um, I think the next thing to talk about is is a big lighter, mm-hmm. some kind of fire starter. I mean, yep. you can get striking fire starters you can wear on your neck. Mm-hmm. You can get, you know, a small big lighter. They've even got the little micro ones. You yeah, can get one ones. of those plasma Zeus lighters. I mean, there's so many different things. But seriously, Bic, yeah, for the price, yeah, for it, the convenience, exactly. And for your EDC, you, they do make the smaller compact ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just that uh, fits easily in your pocket or I mean, in your bag. I've got the two and a half inch one. Mm-hmm. But then there's Couple also the half-inch. Yeah, it's um, just like an inch. It's just a really small. Yeah, it's a, it's a half-inch um, top and a half-inch bottom. The bottom is, is – it's a small fuel reserve, but mm-hmm. it'll start 20 oh, yeah. fires. I mean oh, – Or, yeah. Or more. But something simple, something easy that you can always carry on you, um, whether it's a, a striking rod um, or yeah, a ferro something. Yeah, rod or something like yeah. that. Yeah, ferro rod. But have something – um, and then the next one is is kind of our one of our favorite topics that could go on for days. Yes, uh, self defense or personal protection, mm-hmm. a sidearm. Mm-hmm. You know, not everybody out there that's listening wants to carry a sidearm. And if you're not comfortable with one, well, don't carry one. Mm-hmm. But it would be better if you were. But start thinking about it. You know, familiar enough with them that it doesn't scare you. There you go. Um, because there's really no reason to be scared. It's it's there's no difference to me with my gun and my watch. They're both tools. Yeah, or my, or my multi-tool here. On yeah, the they're, yeah. They're, they're all tools. They may have different uses, but they're tools. Mm-hmm. And that's the key is it's just something I can use when I need it, when the, ri- when the moment arises. If I've got it on me, yeah. great. If I don't have it on me and I need it, oh, crap. You know, there's been more times where I'm like, crap, I need a first aid kit. Or, oh, crap, I don't have my knife on me because I mm-hmm. just spaced and forgot it. Mm-hmm. Those are things you want to keep with you. So EDC, everyday carry are the items you want to carry with you all the time. Now, Shane and I have different op- different opposing views on mm-hmm. the types on of hang- guns you should carry. On hang- yeah. in particular, yeah. Um, let's talk about your preference. Okay. Um, in my evolution, I guess, of, of carrying concealed, uh, I've gone from revolvers to subcompact pistols, you know, little pocket pistols, to now I carry a full-size. I mean, full, full-size, 4-inch, full-size magazine, uh, inside the waist. handle. Yeah, yeah, full-size grip. Uh Inside the waistband, um, and I've come to come to that conclusion for me because well, there's a lot of things which we really don't have time to get into. But uh, for me, my I say a minimum of a subcompact, which still means uh, full size frame, maybe a, a shorter grip, 
in a shorter barrel, but it's still full-size frame, and it still manipulates and feels like a full-size handgun. And that's for a lot of reasons, because it's easier to manipulate, higher capacity, more accurate. Uh, yes, it's a little more bulky. It's a little wider than, say, a pocket pistol, which I know that you're, you more, lean more towards that way. But uh, Well, it's funny. As you keep calling my Ruger LC9 a pocket pistol, mm-hmm. but in some areas they refer to it as a subcompact. Okay, that's true. Ruger itself calls it a subcompact. Mm-hmm. You're just mean to me. I'm just... And you want me to... Because I'm a big, <laughs> tough guy, you want me to look like this little namby-pamby, and that's fine. But you did kind of give it and got yourself a full-size M&P. Well, I wa- I've always wanted a nice mm-hmm. handgun. But you don't always carry that but one. But I don't over, carry that one because it's, it's actually huge. It's a performance shooter. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a competition gun. But it's still a full four-inch... It's actually a four and a half inch. And I'm a smaller frame than you. Okay, so it's a little bit longer barrel. Yep. Barrel is not as big a deal as uh, the size of the grip because the grip is what will we'll The grip, show. it's big. I mean, it, it, gets it. it carries 17 in the capacity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then one in the chamber where at 18. Yeah. So it's it's pretty big. Yeah. That I can't really carry concealed, especially when I'm doing my real estate business. Mm-hmm. So unless I'm gear, unless I've got a shoulder holster and a jacket a on. A jacket on or something like that. And during the summer, that's yeah. just miserable because we're a high desert. Mm-hmm. High desert misery is not fun. So I've 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 been able to adjust my wardrobe, if you want to use mm-hmm. that word. Well, yeah, you have to. Yeah, to accommodate the larger firearm. But I think the advantage of carrying a larger firearm in my everyday carry are so much more than say even even a smaller subcompact because it's it's that is smaller than my other subcompact. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm a I'm in a Springfield. I'm an XD guy. I love my XDs. Sure, Glocks are great. Uh, MAPs are great. It's personal preference. It really comes down to personal preference of what fits your hand best. And we're not going to tell you one's better than the other yeah. because it goes back to personal preference. Mm-hmm. What you, what you can shoot best, what feels best in your hand, what you can manipulate the the, the easiest. I I've just settled on on the XDs, XD nine, XD the new mod twos. Uh, yes, I would love to have a collection of Glocks and and all the other handguns out there too. But <laughs> I'd rather have food, my finish off my food storage too. You know, absolutely. Before that. And get your water storage. And, and that's what we're really going to get into next week is really talking about what you should have in your car mm-hmm. and then in, and what you should have in your home. Like more of the shelter in place mm-hmm. set up of your gear there, which yeah, I have a list of really cool things that we've, you know, I got at PrepperCon that's just some really cool stuff that you guys are, you, you, you're missing out if you don't know about these th- yeah. this gear. And that's really why we bring this up because if, if you don't know, you know, how, how can you know, right? I, well, that's the number one comment I've gotten from doing PrepperCon the last three years mm-hmm. is people will tell me, wow, I didn't know this existed. This is going to make preparedness so much easier for mm-hmm. my family. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. You know, expose you to some different products that are going to be either the right products or the wrong products for you. But if you don't get exposed to it, you don't know it exists. Mm-hmm. You know, it may solidify that you like what you already have and that you're yeah, already absolutely. ready and no, you that's don't a need great to point. twist or, or turn anything, but it gives you other options to look at mm-hmm. and, and it'll fill the gaps that you may have that you don't realize you have. And so I, I recommend go to those expos, go to those fairs. There's one coming up here pretty soon um, The Utah State University puts on. It's every September. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's in two weeks. I, we'll we'll talk about town? it next okay, week. We'll Southtown. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that one's, it's a, it's a good one. It's a small one, but it's a good one. Um, and it's and USU has an extension program. So if you want to learn more about preparedness, their extension program has classes on every oh, cool. uh, facet, um, and they're really great, really great classes. Everything from gardening to sheltering in place to water filtration. Oh, cool. They're they're there. Um, I also recommend ReadyMan. Oh, yeah, com. Absolutely, they've got tons more classes, um, and they're all short video segments, mm-hmm. um, and most of it's free. And then they have some more advanced classes that you can pay for the advanced classes for yeah. a subscription membership. But then they give you discounts on all the cool gear that they do, like the Rats tourniquets. Yeah. And so what you're really getting cards. to is that part of your EDC is not just your gear. It's it's your skills. It's got to go back to the skills. It's got to go we back can't to forget, mindset. Yeah, we can't forget the skills. We love talking about the gear. We love giving you our recommendations, forcing our will upon you, buy this. But skills <laughs> is really what it comes down to. I mean, it's if you have the gear but don't really know how to use it properly... It's not. It's not. It's, 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 it'll kill yeah. you. You know, we we talk a lot about your bug out bag or your seventy two hour kit. Buying the kit at the store is buying death. Mm. You're giving a green light to, to to the reaper to death, whatever you want to call them. I'm ready now because you don't know what's in that kit, and most of the time they're subpar products mm-hmm. that the manufacturer put together because they got it at the cheapest mm-hmm. price, which yeah. means it's the cheapest product. And Scott and I have we built our own. I'm calling mine my a toolkit. I don't want to call it a bug out bag or a get home bag. Uh, I'm just calling it my prepper toolkit. Yeah, 
I think that's the right way to call it. And and mine, it's evolved over the years, and sometimes the value in it is around six to eight hundred dollars. Mm, a lot of expensive stuff in there. But I've got stuff for other people in my kits. I try to get as much stuff as possible to help as many people as possible. And we are out of time. I wish we had more time. Dang. Thank you for tuning in this week. We're going to continue this conversation next week. This segment has been brought to you by Survival Medical. Survival-medical.com, the only first aid kit's tougher than nature. It's first aid evolved. It's the kind of kit you want to have on your person, really in your car, mm-hmm. in your home, and in your EDC bag. So stay tuned. We'll be back next week. Shane at Prepper-